Hello and welcome back to another video on Unpack Technologies. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to adjust the screen time settings on your macOS device. This will allow you to set limits on certain applications or downtime where you don't use the device or specifically for certain apps, or you can just use it to get a summary of how long you're using your device for. This can be done for a child or it can also be done for yourself just to get an idea and insight into how you're using your device. It's a pretty simple process, so let's get straight into it. All right, so to get into the screen time settings, what you need to do is Go down to your system settings app um, on macOS Ventura. It is called system settings, which is what I'm running. If you're on macOS Monterey or older, it will be called uh, system preferences and it will look slightly different to this, but you should still be able to follow along. So what you need to do is find the screen time settings uh, and on Ventura, it's listed down the left hand side here and click on screen time. Now, what you'll see is screen time here. Get a weekly report with insights about your screen time and set time limits for apps you want to manage. So what you need to do is turn this on using the little slider and then you get a whole heap of more options once you turn it on. And I'll go through each of these systematically. So we'll start off with app usage. So you can see here, uh, obviously this computer hasn't been used all that much on this particular user. So the usage is gonna be almost nothing. Um, but you can see here that it says the usage is 11 seconds. So that will show you how long you've used your device for. And then you might get some screen on time insights as to how long you've been in each particular app, which you'll see down here. So you can click on the apps and get a detailed insight into like you've spent 11 seconds on system settings and total screen time average. This isn't going to be correct because I've only just turned it on on this user, but over time you'll get some good ideas about how this is working. And if you've got lots of different apps here, you can just search um, for them here, and then you can click on it. Um, that's if you've got lots there. And you can choose between showing apps or just showing certain categories. So that gives you a bit of an idea. And if I open Safari, for example, and look at Apple's website for a moment, so scroll around on there, you'll see that it adds Safari to this list. And then more in more specifically, it also adds what website you're on as well, which is really handy uh, for this type of process here. So you can get a detailed insight into how you're using it. It also says up here when it was last in updated. So that's really helpful as well. Now we can look at notifications and this is where it gives you a very similar layout, but it'll show you what apps have given you what notifications at what times and you can then put a stop to that or try to work out how you can limit those notifications and also what notifications are using most of your time. So what you're most interactive with when you see those notifications. So this is quite handy for that. Obviously, there's no data to show, but um, it allows you to see that. And you can choose between just today or the entire week. Uh, and that will change your view as well. And you can also go back to different days as well. And then you can jump straight back to the today by just clicking the today button. Going back, we can also see pickups. Once again, this is a very similar page here. And this is just showing you how often you quote unquote pick up your device or if it's a Mac, go on and unlock it and start using it throughout the day. So um, that's just a good insight into that and whether you may need to change your habits if you're wanting to uh, lessen your screen time over time. So going back, there's also a few more options here. So that's all of the ones that are in the sort of first category here. And then there's a second category. So this has some more of the limits um, and things that you can set. So we'll start with downtime. And downtime essentially means that only apps you choose to allow and phone calls will be available. So you have to set, if you've got downtime turned on, you have to set specific apps that you want to allow. Otherwise, everything else will be blocked. So what you can do is turn that on uh, and what you'll see here is it's essentially blocked out most of my apps here um, due to a, what they call a time limit. So if I try to open one, 
it's just going to say that I've reached my time limit on notes and I can't use it anymore. But at any time, um, depending on what app you're in, so I could go to calendar. If you haven't set a screen time passcode, you can just click ignore limit. If you have got a screen time passcode, for example, for your child, they'll need to enter that um, to get in. So if I click ignore limit, you've got some options like one more minute, remind me in 15 minutes or ignore the limit for today. So if you click one of those, like one more minute, it'll give me one more minute on the calendar app. And um, that's downtime, but that's sort of the same view you'll get if you use up screen time on other apps. For example, if you only set an hour for certain apps, that will be um, what you sort of get uh, in that view. And then you can also schedule it for every day at a certain period of time. Uh, that's the default settings there. Or you can do custom for each individual day and whether you turn it off for some days, uh, for example. So um, really up to you how you want to do that. I'll just turn that off and it's reopened my notes out there, but it gives you an idea of what it's sort of like. Going down, there's the app limits section, and this allows you to set daily time limits for certain app categories. So once again, this will act very similar to downtime, but instead of just blocking everything, no matter what time you've spent on it, this will require you to sort of spend um, some certain amount of time on the app and then it will block you out after that time. So you can add a limit. For example, if I add a limit on, uh, let's just say all apps and categories, I'm just gonna select everything and I'm only going to allow one minute on these apps. And what I'm gonna to do to show you how this works, so I'm gonna open Safari and we're just gonna leave it in the background and see what happens uh, after about one minute of usage here. So I'm just gonna um, move it to the side and I might also open notes as well just to, to show you what happens here. Um, so I'll come back to that in a moment. Then we've got the Always Allowed apps. So what the Always Allowed apps do is it means that the apps are available during downtime um, even if your time limit has been reached or if downtime has been uh, used up. So, for example, um, if you activate downtime, you may want certain apps still available, such as um, messages or anything, really. And what this will allow you to do, um, and I've noticed this has reached my time limit. I'll go back to that in a moment. But what this will allow you to do is say, okay, at any time... I want uh, messages, which is on by default, to be allowed. Um, so if my time limit is reached or if downtime is enabled, I want messages to still be allowed um, to be used um, even if you've reached your time limit. And I can adjust these settings for anything. So I can turn on for Edge or Outlook or like Mail, things like that um, can be turned on to always allow. And as you'll see, if I go up to something else that's in my dock, um, such as photos, where is it here? There we go. If I turn photos on, you'll see it goes from grey to then going filled out. And if I turn it back off, it will then go back to grey and say time limit. So essentially, it's pretty self-explanatory. That's how uh, these are the apps that are always allowed no matter what. And you can search um, if you need to as well. I'm uh, not sure why it didn't come up, but... Uh, if you need to find a certain thing there. Now let's come back to these app time limits. I'm not sure why Safari hasn't done that. That might be always allowed. But the time limit has been reached on notes. So you'll see that's because I used my one minute up. And it's now blocked me out of all of these apps here. Um, so um, let me just quit out of that. Oh, okay. Um, quit out of the app store. Um, yeah, so you'll see, reach my time limit on notes. I can either ignore the limit or just click OK. Um, and if I turn off my app limits completely, uh, this will bring everything back up. It's tried to open the app store here. But that's how app limits work. And I'll just quit out of notes. The last thing here is content and privacy. So this will allow you to put in restrictions. Um, this is probably mainly for your child, but you can use it for yourself as well. 
um, if you want to restrict explicit content, for example, purchases and downloads, and also maybe some of the privacy settings. So if you turn this on, you can set restrictions for each of these things. So each of these will open a different sub menu, and you can go through that if you want. Uh, so you can see all these sub menus that come up. You can change these toggles as you please, and it's got restrictions for content, store, app, and preferences as well. So um, lots of different options there that you can put in for content and privacy settings. And finally, the option is to use a screen time passcode. It says use the passcode to secure screen time settings to allow for more time when limits expire. So this is probably more if you're a parent and you're setting this up for your child. It will allow you to have a master password that allows you to change the settings, but your child can't get into it. And if they, for example, want some more time, they can get you to put the passcode in and it will allow them the additional time. So if you turn that on, what you do need to make sure of is, and you can see that error here, is that the user account is a standard user account, not an administrator. Uh, if it's an administrator, it can't be done. So it has to be converted to a standard user account to be able to use the screen time passcode. So yeah, that's essentially it on the screen time settings on Mac OS. Um, you can see going back to app usage, there's a little bit more data here now that I've been using it for a little bit longer. Um, so you sort of get the idea of how that works. And hopefully this was helpful in giving you a good idea on how to use screen time and set it up. And hopefully you've had some great success in doing so. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are about screen time and whether you use it personally. And also you can let me know any video suggestions down there as well, because I'm more than happy to make those videos if you'd like to see them. Once again, hopefully this was helpful and thanks for watching this video on Unpack Technologies. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.